Hello, welcome to Mix Training. This is Better Mix, and today we're gonna see Redshift Custom AOBs. All right, so Custom AOBs is a really cool new thing in Redshift. So you need a really new version of Redshift to take advantage of this. I think it was version 0.51, uh, 2.551, the one that uh, added uh, AOBs. Uh, so we're going to see how we can take advantage of AOBs. So basically you can take advantage of AOBs uh, in two ways. I, and I think the most Houdini way of taking advantage is promoting attributes and making an AOB out of that because that's what we most of the time uh, do in Houdini. We ha I have this particle uh, man here walking and I have a bunch of attributes here that I want to uh, export to an AOB. So for example, I have here a velocity attribute. I'm going to visualize this attribute maybe with just a color. Color. So in this color node, I can set one of the attributes you can see here. I have a bunch of attributes here. Some of them are from the simulation, but some of them are attributes that I want uh, that I added myself, like the uh, ID noise here, which is one attribute that I added. So let's uh, add an attribute uh, from attribute ramp from attribute id noise so this is a noise attribute i added to the particles and that attribute uh, the compositor could use it to add more randomization to the color of the particles in comp or something like that uh, i also have a bunch of groups here you can see here i have some particle groups here point groups head pants shirt shoes which came from the model and then I promoted those uh, groups here and make them into an integer attribute here. You can see now I have those and I could actually like here, you can see I can color by the attribute now called hands or uh, the head. And this could also be useful for uh, the compositor to maybe color correct different areas or any control you wanna have in compositing. I also have just the color from velocity here, which I'm making the, the main color of the particles. So we have some interesting color uh, to begin with, but we're gonna export all these attributes into uh, AOVs. And the way you do this is in the shader. So let's go to the material network. And I have this uh, material builder here, uh, which is the, the one that I'm assigning to the particles. And I'm exporting all these attributes here. You can see I'm exporting ID noise, velocity, age, Hands, head, pants, and these are just like masks uh, for the particles, these ones. And these are attributes that the compositor might be able to control uh, in compositing to give variation or color correct the particles. Uh, so what you do here, I'm, I'm just giving the, the base particles color here. I'm, I'm importing the color here to the material. That's sta standard. Um, so uh, I don't want a reflection for this, all right? Then what you do here in, in, in the middle of your regular, you have the material connected to this guy. So in the process here or in the pipeline here of the shader, you uh, connect these guys, which are the store color to AOV nodes. And there's three of these guys, let's uh, store. You can see there's uh, one for color, one for integer and one for scalar. Basically, it's just like this is a color attribute if you want to export three values, RGB. This is if you want to export just one bo Boolean value, like zero or one. And scalar is just for zero to one for uh, or whatever value, but uh, it is a, it's just one value, like a float. Instead of three attributes like this one, it should be one. Uh, so then you put this guy here I'm, I'm using a color one and you can see there's aovs here when you put this when you put this node first store there's just one thing so you can you connect the the beauty which is going to be the material and then you pipe this basically it's just like going it's like a bypass there the material basically the material is going to go through and then you do your aov work here and then you create this guy i'm i'm using an, a color user data to get the the ID noise. And then I plug that into the first one there. And you can see when I plug that, it's it's giving me another one. So anytime you, you plug one node, it will give you an extra one. So then you put the name here. 
of the attribute has to be the exact name of the attribute as you do here. Uh, and then that's going to be passing to the shader already. All right. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm doing here. Let me just remove this and, uh, give this back here. So I'm, I'm doing the same for velocity. Even, even if velocity is a float attribute, I'm just passing it as a color. It doesn't matter. And age as well, since it's a float, it can go from uh, zero to one. It's just going to be white to uh, black to white. It doesn't matter. And I'm just, I just have this open name expression just to get this guy, but uh, it doesn't matter. It's just an expression there. Then I'm storing some integers. These guys, since these guys are integers, uh, integer attributes, do you do need to have an integer um, store here for them separately because it's not going to work with this guys. If you mix them here, it's not going to work. So I have the hands, same thing, the hands, the head. Again, this is just the name. I'll just put that expression to just type it once, but uh, you can just type the name here. Uh, pants, shirt, and the shoes. And again, you just plug the first one to the beauty input and that's the bypass. Then everything goes, uh, fits up to the material. So that's, uh, the, that's part two. Part one is, is you have your attributes. Uh, part two, you set, set this up into the shader. Of course, the shader has to be, the shader has to be applied to the object here, has to be applied. And then the third part is in your, uh, wrap object in your, uh, redshift wrap. Uh, you go to the output uh, AOV section, you create as much, as much AOVs as you need here. And then you change it to custom, which is the bottom one here. And then here, the only thing you need to do is just type the name here exactly uh, the same name as you, you use here for the attributes. You use it here and then you add one for each. And you can set, if you want the data to just be RGB or point or just scalar, you can change that. Uh, there, I just, I just didn't do it, but if you want to save on, on uh, space for those, you can change that. And uh, you can see I have all these guys' attributes, uh, all those attributes there. And then uh, you can just render this and it will give you all those passes. So the other thing is you can actually uh, use a shader as an AOV, like uh, let's say the common one is, is using AO, like ambient occlusion. Uh, but these shaders, uh, the, the one gotcha is that they have to be created in shops. Uh, I don't know why it's still, do you have to create them in shops? You create this network and then inside, I just create my shader, my AOV in this case. If you have a special shader that does something special when you render it, you can use that as an output to an AOV if you, if you, that's what you need. So once you have this shader here, you just pass it to the, uh, to the uh, custom shader like this and here default shader and it will render that as an AOV as well. So let's see how this looks when you render it. All right, so my renders down here you can see this is my particles. They have the default color that I added on them. And then I have my passes here and this is my ID noise. You can see that's the attribute I created. Uh, velocity, it goes from, uh, you can see here is black because those particles stopped. Uh, age. It starts from zero to one. Uh, then the hands, it's the uh, mask for the hands, basically. Uh, head, you can see this will come handy for the compositor, of course. The pants, uh, the shirt, etc. All the parts of the effect, the, sh the shoes look pretty cool. And then we have the one that is based from of a shader, which is the AOV. You can see this is the ambient occlusion. And uh, there you go. It's, it's really simple. It's pretty useful. I already used them in a couple of projects and they have been pretty, pretty, pretty useful. Uh, the compositor got everything he needed and more. And it's pretty fast and simple. Uh, the last thing I'm going to mention is that once you have this setup like this, if you just uh, run this into an EXR, it will just create a multi-layered EXR. And uh, for some pipelines, that's great. All those passes will be embedded into one EXR. If you want each uh, pass separate or uh, one of them separate in a separate file, you just uh, put a file name here. Let's say in this case, if this is going to be the main file, you can just uh, get uh, one of this and put a name like, I don't know, this is going to be the uh, ID noise. 
and there you go it's going to save a separate file with this one only and the other ones will be in the exr if you just want to have the pipeline for some some pipelines they use fusion for compositing uh, prefer having all the passes separately or some pipelines that have really heavy exr files loading from a network uh, they rather load uh, separate files instead of one huge exr file so all right i hope you enjoyed this one this is a really really useful technique uh, go use it in on your projects whenever you need passes and uh let's keep learning together i'll see you in the next one cheers